I know I met Molly Burke quite a few months ago. But here's the video now. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Love you guys. Mwah. Hello, beautiful world. Today, you are going to see something special. This is a meetup with Molly Burke in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I got a chance to meet Molly Burke and I can tell you she is awesome. She's she's funny. <laughs> uh, she's just such a sweetheart. Um, <laughs> so what happened when I went to go take a picture with her? <laughs> no. So when I went to go hug Molly, uh, her handler said, this is Virginia. She said, hi Virginia, what's your name? <laughs> So we both started laughing, it was, it was pretty funny, um, but yeah, it was pretty cool. I like totally froze up because like stuff was going so fast that like I didn't get a chance to be like, oh, I saw you at Ripley's Aquarium uh, literally the day before and that's what I was gonna say. Like, I saw you at Ripley's Aquarium. I didn't wanna say hi um, because I wanted you to enjoy your time. Um, and also, I was having a seizure because of the loud noise, because of a uh, Friday jazz night that they had. So, the echo in the whole place was just messing me up. So, yeah, I mean, if I did say hi to Molly, I probably would have. Um, blinked out for a while and she would have just thought I was weird so I chose to wait until the next day to <laughs> say hi to her but unfortunately I didn't get to tell her all of that so yeah oh well I still had plenty of fun so it all worked out I even got a bunch of pictures with Molly which was so awesome and you can see the exact moment where we're laughing about the part that <laughs> she said, Hi, Virginia. <laughs> uh, what's your name? And you can see the part where she starts laughing and I'm laughing too. <laughs> I have uh, more pictures on Instagram. If you want to check that out, I have the link down below. Q&A. Uh, I think I got like most of the last half of it. Um, I can definitely say that what Molly said, a lot of what she said, definitely hit home with me. I definitely resonated with a lot of it and you know, she may be like a year younger than me, but I mean, I feel like she's a lot wiser than I am um, because she's an inspiration to me to what I aspire to be in the future and what I struggle even now to do. And like she says, do what you can. So that's where I want to be. So we're at Samsung. So many people are waiting, two people behind me. I guess they're setting up. It has officially started. Nice. Um, like we all, like it's cold, but not just as a cold. When you have a disability that affects your mobility, um, so whether it be you know being in a wheelchair or a walker or or something that affects my mobility, which is being blind and having to navigate with a guide dog, it is so hard when it's snow and ice and you can't see where you're going and the dog like everything's white and it's just really difficult. So knowing that I can just freely navigate in warm, sunshiny weather all year round has been a blessing for sure. What does living through mean to you? Love that question. So 
living freely. You'll see all the merch that I just keep so wearing today. Thank you. But it's based off of my tattoo. It is literally the exact script of my tattoo, which isn't like a font or anything. The guy freehanded it. The artist who did it does typography, and he only does script tattoos, so he just totally freehanded my tattoo. I got it when I was 19 years old, and it is the only one of my tattoos that I got completely on a whip. I was in Halifax for five days for work, and I had a bit of free time, and my assistant at the time and I were like, what are we gonna do? Like, Halifax is pretty small, it's a gorgeous town, but it's pretty small. So we're like, what are we gonna do for five days to kill time? And we're like, why don't we just get a tattoo? So we literally Googled, sorry parents in the audience, we're like, don't tell my child this. Um, I Googled, we just Googled like best tattoo shop Halifax, and there was two award winning shops that like every year would win best award back and forth. They were like battling it out every year, and uh, they were like on the same street. So really cool. Let's just go up to one, see if they have an appointment for this afternoon. So we went up, first one was like, no, we're booked for like a month. The second one, which was actually way more like aesthetic, it was like very beautiful. Um, we went in, we were like, yeah, we can see you in half an hour. So we are like, got it. So I was like, what am I gonna get? <laughs> and um, I called my mom and I was like, hey, just so you know, I'm 19, I don't have to for permission, but I am getting a tattoo in half an hour. Just wanted to let you know, <laughs> don't tell that. And um, <laughs> so I went in and I was like, hey, living freely. And um, one thing that I hear a lot from people is like, oh, I really want to get a tattoo, but I feel like, you know, I'm gonna regret it one day. But as somebody who has multiple tattoos and who like got my first one at 17, um, my tattoos have only continued to gain new meaning as I've grown and changed. Um, they've continued to represent and change with me and represent new things. So, you know, at first it was like a very, very literal, like I was living freely. I was just being spontaneous and having fun and doing something that I had never done before, like being so spontaneous like that. Um, and it was, I was living on my own for the first time in my life. I had an apartment downtown at Carlton in Parliament in Cabbage Town, such a cute neighborhood. Um, I was touring the world with a, my speaking career. I was just feeling very free um, in many ways. I wasn't living with parents, wasn't having to go to school. Um, so I just felt free. But it's continued to grow and, and for me, remind me to live free of other people's judgments, to live freely to be who I want to be, and to not let other people make decisions for me, my life, who or how I'm supposed to live, to just let myself be free to be me. So that's what it's, it's continued to mean for me in my life. Uh, hi Molly, I'm just wondering, like, I know you love LA because no like cold weather but i always like to ask this to like people who are canadian but they've like moved to the states um like what's your favorite thing that la has or the state has that we don't have and what's your favorite thing that like canada has that la does not have so my favorite thing okay this is like a really weird thing when you live there like i've lived there for just over a year and when you live there, you start to, like, versus just visiting for an extended period, you start to realize the things that, like, they don't have that we have or, like, what is better about Canada. So this is super strange, but, like, their chips suck. <laughs> like, our chips are so much better. It's really crazy. They don't have the flavor range that we have. Like, they have the worst flavors. Like, they don't have dill pickle, they don't have ketchup chips, they don't have all dress. Like, what is this? But also, their chips are like over salted, like over flavored. There's too much flavor on them when you do get them that I like, can't even eat them because I'm like, this is so salty and over flavored. So I miss good chips. The other thing is, Starbucks is not as good there because, again, like, no shade to America, this is very American. Everything is so sweetened at Starbucks. Everything, so like green tea lattes are one of my favorite orders in Canada. And the difference is they use real matcha powder and then if you want, they add liquid cane sugar. In America, the sugar is in the matcha powder. So it's so sweet, it tastes like vanilla candy. Like it doesn't taste like matcha at all. 
and you can't take it out. Whereas here, you can put it in if you want it, but you don't have to. There, it's just in it. You don't have the choice. And like every other drink is the same at Starbucks. It's so oversweetened. So that's something I miss about Canadian Starbucks, is it not being so sugary. And then in terms of what I love about LA that we don't have, um, I mean, stereotypical LA, like lots of health food options. Everything is so healthy. And also like everyone there like has crazy colored hair and wears glittery clothes like me. And their creativity is celebrated and being like a weirdo is celebrated and viewed as a good thing. Whereas sometimes I feel like here, I kind of stand out a bit more. Um, there I feel like really accepted for, like there my job is normal. Here people are like, sorry, you do what now? Um, and here I'll like wear something and my friends here are like, you are the only person I know who would wear that. Whereas I wear it in LA and I can't get down a corner of the block without people being like, where did you buy that? I love it. Like it's just celebrated and I think that's super cool. Hi, um, my question is, you talk a lot about bullying and facing that. How did you kind of like get past it and let it go, I guess? Good question. So it kind of ties back to something I was saying earlier. Bullying never stopped for me. Grade eight was by far the worst year of bullying, but I was bullied straight up before I graduated high school. In fact, when I was, like, when I was in grade 12, kids would literally throw garbage at me when I would walk down the halls. Like, it was like a movie. Um, my mom actually had to witness it one day. She came to pick me up from grade 12 to bring me to an appointment, and she had to run to the bathroom, so she came with me, and these kids took a container with ketchup in it, and they slid it across the ground so I would step into it. And my mom like, looked at them and was like, what are you doing? And they just burst out laughing, like, even with an adult standing there watching them. They did it and they kept throwing garbage at me and she was like, oh my God. I was like, don't even worry, mom. Like, this is my everyday. Like, it's no big deal. So for me, bullying never went away. Switching schools, everything, nothing made it stop. But what changed for me was how I viewed myself. So I was really focused and driven on achieving my goals, on loving myself, on being the best, best version of myself that I could be. So that meant eating healthy, having fitness, having extracurricular activities that I enjoyed, like singing in a band, um, having people that I loved outside of school, um, having passion, like public speaking, having all of these other aspects of my life that I cared about made me feel whole and made me feel like I was, you know, good enough as I am and worthy and, and just learning to accept myself and dress however I wanted to dress, not how I thought was cool and listen to the music that I liked, not the popular music. Just liking who I was made me stop caring that other people didn't like who I was. So truly, I mean, loving yourself isn't just these like fluffy words we throw around. When you learn to love yourself, it's not something you say, it's something you live every day. And it's not something you have to talk about all the time because it's something you just feel deeply. And so for me, yeah, the bullying never stopped, but I stopped caring because I learned to love who I was so other people didn't need to validate me. Hello, um, Molly. Um, um, I want to say that I admire what you do and I, I respect what, you, what you're doing. And, um, and I, I, I want to say that um, what my mother uh, said to me, um, don't let anybody or anything rob you of your joy. Um, and not only that, but um, 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 before, I, before I ask my, my, my question, um, 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 even when I said don't, don't, don't let anybody rob you of your joy, I need it. And um, even though my other quote, quote I would like to give to you is this, like I said before, I'll say it again, no matter who we are, no matter where we come from, no matter what strengths and skills we have, as family and friends, we got to be there for each other and for others, no matter what. And um, um, since I say I admire what you're doing, like, you know, like even what you do on YouTube, um, my question for you is, do you, do you enjoy summer a lot? And uh, do you, uh, enjoy like nature a lot like or anything because um one of the, the things i like about nature is that with is, is like you know beautiful butterflies and and so because i thought if you thought of taking photos like with with 
beautiful butterflies that I had, go for it. Because um, I, I always love taking beautiful photos of animals in nature, especially having a butterfly on my finger. So, do you, do you enjoy nature a lot? I, I love saying don't, don't let anybody rob your joy, um, or don't let anything rob your joy. I think I totally agree with that. Um, and do I like nature? So. I, I am very much like a true combination of girly girl and tomboy. Like I'm obsessed with pink and glitter and makeup and shopping and heels and all the things you know about. But I also love like jumping out of an airplane, jumping off a cliff. I really want to do the CN Tower at Edge Walk when I was here, but it closed down. So next time I visit, I'll be doing that. Um, I love like camping and ATVing and skiing and getting in the mud. So I grew up like a true Canadian going to camp every summer. Um, and being, a, I was a camp counselor uh, for three or four summers growing up as a teenager. So I definitely love like getting outdoors, camping, going swimming in the lake. Um, yeah, for sure, I love nature. So I know that was the last question. I just want to wrap this up by saying, once again, thank you all so much for coming. Thank you to Samsung for throwing this and for sponsoring my series and for our continued work together. Um, and just remember to always do what you can. I love you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you like that, please come back for more. Like, subscribe, and be sure to tell your friends. I swear it's not a chore. Be sure to check out my other channels. My health channel, my comedy channel, and my gaming channel. My health channel for tips and tricks on being vegan and to learn more about my epilepsy. My comedy channel for more laughs on Thursdays. And my gaming channel for awesome playthroughs and wonderful streaming. I love you guys so, so, so much. Mwah.